People that are the hungriest, they find a way. When you know why you want something, when it's desperation, the power of being desperate is something that most people avoid. You are not hungry enough, you are not starving enough, and you are not focused enough. I say this to you as a friend. What are the things that are stealing your focus? Who are the people that are stealing your focus? And begin to eliminate these distractions. Get laser focused and obsessed on what you want. Welcome back to Max Out, everybody. Today we're gonna to cut through all of the BS and get to two of the most fundamental things that I think you have to have in order to go achieve at the highest levels. You know, we talk oftentimes about strategies and tactics and mindset, and there's a million different things that you know we could talk about that contribute to winning in life. But at the highest levels, if you were to distill it down to two very simple things that I would wish for you that I see in the people I coach. Like, if I'm gonna recruit somebody into my business, what are the things I look for in them? Is it background, is it intellect, is it people skills, is it their ability to close? There's all these things. The things that I look for in people are hunger and focus. It's their ability to be super hungry for what they want, incredibly after it, and the ability to be laser focused. And I want you today to evaluate those two things in you. Let's start with hunger level. I mean, how bad do you want your goal right now? I think there's a lot of people in the world today because it's a really niche thing to talk about. I want this, this is my outcome, this is my goal. Like, how bad do you want? Do you want it as bad as breathing? Do you want it as bad as anything you've ever wanted in your life? And if you calibrate it at the highest enough levels, what I found is the people that are the hungriest, they find a way. When you know why you want something, when it's desperation, the power of being desperate is something that most people avoid. They think desperation is a weakness. And I'm here to tell you, desperation is one of the most powerful emotions you could possibly possess because when you're desperate, you find reserves and reservoirs of ideas, talents, and a strength that you don't know you have when you find yourself in a desperate situation. So ironically, the one thing most people avoid in their life, hunger, which is caused by being desperate, when you're starving, you become desperate. Think of somebody who's starving on the street. They've got to, how resourceful would you get if your children were literally starving and you had to feed them, right? So the number one thing we need more than anything to win is hunger, which comes from a state of desperation. Yet we're constantly trying to comfort ourselves in the real world to avoid the state of being desperate. And I'm telling you that I think you need to embrace desperation again in your life. Like, do you want it so bad that you're desperate for it. Let me give you an example. I can tell you that I think the times that you've achieved at the highest levels in your life, you might have been the most desperate. Let me give you an example. If you were sitting here and you're in a meeting right now and someone tapped you on the shoulder, God forbid this ever happened, they said, um, your child's been in an accident and they've been rushed to the hospital and it's grave. Instantly you'd be desperate to get to your child, wouldn't you? Those of you that don't have children, if it was your parents, you'd be instantly desperate to get to them. And think about what happens when that desperation kicks in. All of the things we worry about, all of our fears, all of our concerns, all of the lack of resources we have immediately fade away because we must get to this child of ours, this loved one of ours. And so if you were in the middle of a conference and they said, "Here's a no your, your child has been in a serious accident, it's grave, you need to get to them. Would you sit there and think for a minute, well... I don't want to get up right now in the middle of their speech because what will everybody think about me? I mean, I don't want to make waves here. That would go away, wouldn't you? You'd get right the hell up and run out of the room. If when you got to the back of the room, there was a security guard that said, hold on a minute, stop. Nobody leaves this room. A very important person's up there speaking right now. Would you go, you're right, sorry, I, I don't want to uh, uh, violate protocol. I don't want to go, I don't want to color outside the lines here. You're right. I'll go back to my seat. Would you do that? Of course not, because you're desperate. Whatever is required of you to get to this child, this loved one of yours, you would do. And when you went out to the parking lot and you got into your car and you realized, my gosh, I forgot my keys, I left them in the room, would you go, well, it's just a sign. I mean, maybe I just don't have what it takes to get to my child. That silly, stupid story. You wouldn't do that at all, would you? You'd immediately respond. You'd get back up. You'd run in the room. You'd knock the security guard down. You'd go back. You'd get your keys. You'd run back out. When you turn the car on, it didn't start. The battery was dead. Would you go, yeah, that's just another sign. You know, maybe I'm just not cut out to, to get to my destination to get to my child, to get to this loved one of mine. No, because you're desperate to get there, aren't you? So you'd throw the keys away and you'd run. If you had to go to the next stoplight and carjack a car, you'd say, listen, drive me to the hospital, I have to get to my child, and the person said no, 
Would you stop at the first objection? Would you say, well, yeah, I don't know exactly what words you say. No, you don't understand. You're taking me there. And if they hesitate, if you had to carjack the dadgum car, you'd carjack it, wouldn't you, when you got there? And when you got to the hospital, if they tried to stop you again and said, no, 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 you got to sign in and fill out all this paperwork. You got to do it perfect. You say, no, that's my child. I've got to get to them, wouldn't you? Whatever it took, you'd get to that loved one of yours. Nothing would stop you. All of the silly things that happen that we let slow us down is related to our lack of hunger and desperation. And so I'm here to ask you, how desperate are you for what you want? Like, here's what I think. I think most people would just like their goals. They'd like their outcome, but they're not hungry for them. They're not starving for it. They're not desperate for it. But when you start to feel that desperation, it's one of the most powerful emotions in the world because you become so resourceful, you become so determined, and all the noise goes away. See, all of these objections, all of these fears, all of these old stories you tell yourself, all the excuses that you're making, and I love you, so I'm saying this to you, are all going back to a lack of real hunger, real desire, real desperation, because real desperation is beautiful. The most alive you'll ever feel, ironically, is when you're the most desperate. You talk to people, who are the closest to death in, a, in an accident, and they'll tell you, ironically, it was the most alive I've ever felt. Because you're so desperate to survive. You're so desperate to get through it. Yet in life, we try to avoid this all the time. And I'm here to tell you, embrace the desperation. Seek the desperation. So if you ask me, what do I look for in someone I'm coaching, in an athlete, in a business person? Show me somebody hungry. I'll take hunger and desire over IQ, over knowledge, over skills every day of the week. Because I can teach you skills. I can teach you the lessons. I can teach you the words. But I can't give you heart. I can't give you hunger. I can't give you desire. I can't give you the courage to be desperate. Because desperate people look a little funny. Desperate people don't fit in. Desperate people stand out. You see someone desperate, you're like, whoa, what's going on with them? Desperate people get criticism. And most people would rather not stand out They'd, not, they'd rather not leave the crowd. They'd rather not take the criticism. They'd rather not take the heat. So most people say, I'd love to be a millionaire. I'd love to win. I'd love my dream relationship. I'd love the best body I could have. I'd love to be happier, but I don't want to look bad doing it. I don't want to seem desperate. I don't want to seem different. I don't want to step out of the crowd. And as long as you're one of those people who won't step out, who won't look a little bit funny, who worries more about what other people think about them than truly winning, you're always gonna be held back. The number one thing I want is hunger and desperation, man, every single time. So evaluate that right now, listening to this audio or watching this video. What's your level of real hunger? What's your level of real desperation? How bad do you really want it? Or would you just like it? Do you need it like you need to breathe? Do you need it like you need to eat? Do you need it like you need to exist? Or do you just kind of want it? Because you show me two people. You show me one person who's desperate and hungry. You show me another one who'd like it or wants it. You show me one person who's willing to look bad and get uncomfortable and color outside the lines and do whatever they got to do to get to their destination, to get to their child, to get to their dream. And you show me another one who won't, I'll take this person every day of the week. Maybe they don't come from the perfect background. Maybe they don't have all the perfect words. Maybe they don't have all the right relationships, but they got the goodies, man. They got the one thing you gotta have to win, which is hunger and desire and some heart. And I know you've heard these things before, but now I want you to be self-aware. Really, how hungry are you? What are you doing to feed your hunger? What are you doing to feed the fact that you feel like you're starving? Because the more you want something, the lack of it makes you more and more hungry. For example, if I were really hungry and I needed some food, it's one thing to want it. It's another thing, when that food's right in front of me and I'm not allowed to eat it, I become hungrier. So the closer you bring what you want to you increases its hunger level. The more repetitious it is, the more you think about it, the more you bring it into your thoughts over and over and over again, the hungrier you get. That's why repetitive thought about what you want is so critical. So evaluate that. Am I as hungry as I could be? Is I, am I as starving as I could be? Do I want it so bad I'm desperate for it? Do I want it like that person who has to get to their child or their loved one? Or would I just like it? Would I hope for it? Because as long as you're one of those people, see in a fight, you show me two people. This is why it's so hard to repeat as a champion in the fighting game. 
Because you show me someone who's up and coming who's hungry for that title, who's never had it before, who can taste it, who knows if they win that belt, their whole life's going to change. They're going to be champion of the world. All the endorsements, all the money, all their family life, all their parents' lives are going to change. You show me somebody chasing that hungry for it against someone who's just trying to hold on to a title. And that's why most of the time the challenger beats the champ. It's hard to repeat as a champion because the hunger goes down just a little bit. The greatest athletes, the Kobe's, the Brady's, the Jordans of sports, have a way of feeding their hunger all the time and increasing it. What separates them isn't just their work ethic, isn't just their talent, although those things matter, isn't just they practice more. What separates them is they're just hungrier. They somehow find a way as they climb up the ranks and win championships to get even hungrier for more, where 99% of the athletes lose just a little bit of their edge once they get that first championship, that first pro contract, that first big amount of money, that first world championship. They just lose their hunger a little bit. And then there's the elite, they get hungrier. It feeds the beast. For some of you, have you been hungrier in the past? Let's be honest. In the past, were you hungrier for that first promotion? Hungrier for that first goal? Hungrier for the first house? Hungrier for the first relationship? Hungrier for the first time you got fit? And have you lost a little of that hunger where you're just not quite as desperate as you used to be? And so it's feeding your desperation. And the way we do that is we feed it to ourselves over and over again because it becomes something we must have. We have to have it like we gotta eat, like we gotta breathe. Feed the hunger. Feed the desperation, embrace it. Don't try to look so pretty because this desperate state eliminates all the things that hold you back. Your fears, your worries, what you don't know, what the obstacles are, signs, haters, lack of information, lack of blah, blah, blah. It all goes away when you're hungry. The second thing is focus. Can you get laser focused? Human beings can get incredibly great at anything they put their minds to. Total immersion in any topic most human beings can become great if they give themselves enough time. The truth is, most people overestimate what they can do in a month or a year, and they dramatically underestimate what they can do in five years or 10 years. If you get total immersion in a business, total immersion in your body, total immersion in your faith, you totally get laser obsessed, focused at something, it's incredible how great human beings are at adapting and becoming great at it. One example is cancer. My dad, as many of you know, is fighting a particular type of cancer called liposarcoma. I didn't know how to spell liposarcoma three or four years ago. I didn't know it existed. I didn't know what it was or how it functioned. I'm not a, an oncologist. I'm not a doctor. I'd never read anything about it. But all of a sudden, liposarcoma became pretty important to me. And I consider myself now, I've read hundreds of periodicals and articles, and I've asked questions and talked to other doctors. And you know what? I know an awful lot about something I knew nothing about many years ago. And I've become kind of an expert on it. I've had my own conditions with my heart. I know a lot about the heart. I know a lot about the medications. I understand inflammation in the body. I've become sort of a quasi-expert on two things I knew nothing about. Many, many years ago, I knew nothing about communicating on camera or starting a podcast. I'll tell you a funny story. When my podcast started, I was encouraged to do it by Tony Robbins. And when my podcast started, he said, hey, you got to order. People say, I, I now, you're listening to the number one business podcast in the world that didn't even exist two years ago, okay? I knew nothing about podcasting, nothing about how this worked. I did not even know what a podcast was. I want you to understand something. When I was first told to have a podcast, I did not know what one was. And so he says, you got to have one of these. I said, what are they? You know, where do you get the microphones? Where do you get the stuff you talk to before I had this stuff on camera? This is a true story. He goes, I don't know, figure it out. My team did it all for me. I'm like, well, okay. So I Google how to start a podcast. This is how I began what you're listening to right now. Number one in the world right now. Fastest growing show on earth. I Google how to start a podcast. And Tim Ferriss, who had a successful podcast, had done a podcast on how to start a podcast. And so I listened to his podcast, and at the end of it, there was notes, and he said, if you click on this link, it takes you to Amazon, there's a kit there with the microphones and the recording device and all the stuff you do to start a podcast. I thought, okay. So this started by me Googling how to start a podcast. Tim Ferriss had a kit. I listened to the show. I bought the kit. I got back, and I said, Tony, I said, so now what do I do? He goes, I don't know. Set the mics up and just start talking about something. And I'm like, all right. So I do like a 30 minute audio. I set the mics up, I got all the equipment Tim Ferriss said you should have, and I'm done, 
and I call him back and I said, hey brother, I did the podcast. How do I get what I said out of the machine? <laughs> and he goes, I, I don't know. I, well, you got, it's on the chip, take the chip. Now here's how stupid I am. I'm like, chips? I don't, there's no chips. He goes, yeah, there's a chip you put in the machine. I go, I, no one said anything about chips, man. I don't, you, you know, are these, what, you eat these? Like, he goes, no, dummy, there's a chip, like a micro something or other. He didn't know either. You put it in the machine. And I go, shit, I didn't, I don't think I have one of those. So I look and there's no chip. So I literally talked for 30 minutes into a microphone that never even recorded anything. So then I go get the chip, I put the chip in the machine, I do the 30 minutes again, and then I call him, I go, okay, it's on the chip. How do you get the chip into the universe where people hear what you're saying, right? Like, I didn't even know this big, he goes, he goes, I don't know, I th you think you stick it in your computer. So I'm on the phone, I stick the chip in my computer. This is the number one show in the world now. I stick the chip in the computer, and I go, okay, it's in the computer. What button do I hit so people in the world can hear it out of my computer? I'm not kidding you. He goes, I have no idea, man. I don't know how this stuff works. So finally I figure out, oh, you gotta download the chip onto your computer and then it goes to a thing called Libsyn. And I knew none of this stuff. The first podcast I did never got recorded. I Googled how to do it. The chip sat in my computer for two months because I couldn't figure out how to get it out of my computer into the internet, okay? That's how my podcast started but I've become laser focused about podcasting. I'm like, oh, then people said, you should record it and put it on YouTube as well. So I've learned, where do you get the cameras? How do they do it? How do they post it on YouTube? What do you type? I knew none of this stuff. My first Instagram video, literally true story. I do a 30 minute video, my son's kind of the guru. I do the, the one minute story rather. I post it, I got three views the next day and one like. <clears throat> and I call up, this is what I hear. I call up Tony and I go, hey, no one listened to my Instagram video. He goes, well, you posted it at one o'clock, man. You need to post around breakfast time. And this is what I hear him say. I don't know anything about this stuff. True story, swear to you. He goes, you gotta post around breakfast time and dummy, you got no hash browns in your post. And I'm like, trying to not pretend I don't know anything. So I'm going, what, what, why do you, I, I gotta post at breakfast time and for, why does there need to be hash browns? This makes no sense to me. So now I'm mad, but I pretend to know what he's saying, and I call my son, I say, hey, you said you knew about this stuff. You're 15 years old, you're internet savvy. Don't you know all the videos have to be posted at breakfast times, and you gotta have hash browns in the video? My son's like, dad, why would it matter what food is in your video? I, go, I don't know, but he's telling me it has to be breakfast time with hash browns. We went the whole day my first post, lamenting the fact that I had no hash browns in my video. Turns out he was saying hash tags, but I didn't even know what a hashtag was two years ago. And so finally we figured out the hashtags, how to post, how to do a podcast, and it leads us to where you and I are here today. That's because I've been focused and obsessed in this field now for the better part of a year and a half to two years. So not only did I figure out how to get into the internet, not only did I figure out it doesn't matter what breakfast foods are in my posts, that it was hashtags, not only did I understand how what chips were, you don't even know what kind of chips I think he was talking after the hash browns. You don't even wanna know. But suffice it to say, I figured out what type of chips. A year and a half later, for my podcast now, and I like him to do more downloads than Tim Ferriss does. After, and he does a great podcast, but after learning about his kit and Googling how to do it, to think that it's come this far is mind blowing because human beings that get obsessed and immersed in any topic can become great at it and so can you. So pick what you want and get laser focused. Begin to eliminate all the distractions. You are not hungry enough, you are not starving enough, and you are not focused enough. I say this to you as a friend. What are the things that are stealing your focus? Who are the people that are stealing your focus? And begin to eliminate these distractions. Get laser focused and obsessed on what you want. Be starving and hungry to get it. Be desperate to get it. The combination of desperation and hunger with laser focus over an extended period of time is the formula to be great at something and you can apply this formula. Get laser focused, eliminate distractions, eliminate the things that steal your laser focused on it, your research on it, your obsession on it. 
Begin to do these things and you will begin to change your entire life. Yes, I want your mindset better. Yeah, I want your identity higher. No question it's important to have great associations in your life. But dadgone it, you've got to get hungry and you've got to get focused. And I know these sound like basic things, but go to any area of your life you want something right now. Pick the number one thing you want to change. Body, money, business, relationship, faith. I don't care what it is. Pick it right now. One to ten, how hungry are you? How desperate are you? One to ten, the most desperate and hungry you could be. Rank yourself. Number two, how laser crazy obsessed focused are you on what it is you want? One to ten. Ten being hyper psycho crazy obsessed focused. Nothing's in your way. And to the extent you can increase your desperation and hunger and your obsessive focus will be to the extent that you can flourish. Because when those things convene and converge, all of a sudden, the collaborations, the people, the circumstances, the breakthroughs, the insights necessary begin to reveal themselves to you. And not only that, reveal themselves to you with momentum and speed at which you cannot believe. You can wake up a year and a half later, be number one in the world at something that you didn't even know existed before. I'm a testimony to that, and you can be as well. Your success is gonna be predicated more than anything on your hunger and desperation level and your ability to get laser focused and eliminate the distractions in your life. This is what makes us great. I think of athletes that I know, I've watched them get obsessed and hungry early in their careers, and as they make a little bit of money, they start, you know, they're a rapper now, now they're an actor, now they're a producer, now they're a business person, and their basketball or football or baseball or boxing or UFC career begins to suffer as their focus gets diminished, as their obsession gets diminished, as their immersion gets diminished, the great ones never lose that. They never lose the hunger. They only increase it over time. I always try to lay out for you what the solutions are, and then I like to give you a plan. I want to give you a four-step plan to both increase your hunger and increase your focus at the same time. So the first step is always to evaluate where you are currently. So give yourself an evaluation. As I've asked you, one to 10, how would you rank your hunger and desire level? Are you all the way desperate? Are you the most desperate you possibly could be? Because again, I promise you, this is a healthy form of desperation. Okay, so one to 10, evaluate where you are. And then also give yourself an evaluation of where you are in your laser obsessive focused. One being completely unfocused, distracted constantly, even forgetting what our goals are. Five is we're on it from time to time. We keep some notes, we evaluate. 10 is just obsessed, crazy, nothing else matters, focused. If you're not at least at a level eight or nine, you're not optimizing your effectiveness level at both of those areas. Number two, you must become more intentional to change those things. So it's just starting out, everything in life comes from intention. You must intend to increase these things. So I want you to become incredibly intentional at feeding your hunger level. Bringing the goal closer to you, repeating it over and over, makes you starving for it. And the more you can increase that state, the more you stay focused. Ironically, there's a connection between hunger and desperation and focus. They're related, so be intentional about them. The story I gave you about if, God forbid, a loved one or a child of yours was in an accident, can you imagine how focused you immediately become when something becomes that important to you, that desperate to you? What happens is everything else, all the distractions of what other people think about us, any other circumstances, what we don't know, what we don't have, anything scarce to us, goes away because we're so desperate, it increases our focus. If you think about anything you've had that becomes desperate to you, if there was a burglar in your home, for example, and you were desperate, think about the millions of things you're no longer thinking about and how focused you are in on that one thing. We've all had that time when we're laying in bed at night and we think we hear a noise, right? You become so focused, you hear every little creak in the ceiling, don't you? Every little movement of the floor. You hear your sheets move, oh my gosh, there it is again. You become hyper aware and hyper focused when you increase desperation. So become intentional is step two. Third, what is your plan? What is your strategy to increase your hunger level and to increase your focus level? So part of that plan might be, I need to be around people more immediately who can hold me accountable and repeat back to me what I've told them my outcomes are. I need to put myself in situations where I'm accountable, where I'm a part of a group where I have to report my results to them. Perhaps it's going public if it's your body. 
and going public with, this is my intention the next 30 days. This is what I'm going to do. Putting additional pressure on yourself. Perhaps it's shrinking the time frame down. The sooner we must do something, the more desperate it becomes. In other words, if something has to be done within 10 years, how desperate is that? But if it has to become sooner and sooner and sooner, or even if it just has to be a real date put on it, gives us some desperation knowing that date is coming sometime soon. So what is your plan and strategy to increase your desperation? Increase your hunger level. And then focus. What's your plan to increase focus? Oftentimes that could be a plan to eliminate distractions. What's your strategy to eliminate distractions? It might be, I watch too much television at night and it distracts me from my goal. Perhaps you should remove that television from the room. That's a plan and a strategy to eliminate the distraction. Perhaps it's you're being on the internet too long or playing video games. Maybe you need to eliminate them. Perhaps in your nutrition, you're trying to get fit. The distraction are snacks that you have in your home or alcohol. Maybe they need to be removed from your home. What is your strategy and plan to eliminate distractions and increase focus? Because without the evaluation, without the intention, and without the plan and strategy, an actual plan to increase desperation, an actual plan and strategy, get creative, get resourceful. It's only with a plan that you can begin to make changes and a strategy, otherwise it's just a thought. And then fourth, what immediate massive action are you going to take right now? I'm talking about right when this audio or video ends, what's the immediate first massive action you're going to take towards that plan, the first step, the first thing, it's unplug the TV, it's remove the video game, it's throw out the junk food, it's remove a certain person from your life. I don't know what it is, but what is the immediate massive action? Because if we can evaluate where we are and get very clear, because we can't know where we're going if we're not very clear about where we are. In other words, if life is like a GPS and we wanna to get to a particular destination, the only way we can get clear on getting there is to understand and evaluate and be specific about where we currently are. That way we can build the directions. There's no sense of direction, not just with where you're going, where are you? You must know both places. Evaluate what you want and be very honest and evaluate where you are. Now the directions can be drawn out. So we must evaluate, number one. Number two, we must make it our intention to do so. We must get intentional. Get specific, there's a power to intention. There's a power to pointing our mind, which is a weapon, at these issues. Third is our strategy. What is the exact plan we're going to take? Without a strategy, you have no shot. You must have a strategy. The strategy doesn't have to be perfect. The strategy can evolve, but there must be a game plan. There must be something you're doing immediately to start towards this journey. It tells our mind we're making progress. It sends a message of, I'm serious about this. And then fourth, you must take immediate massive action. Knowledge is not power unless it's applied. And you haven't really made a decision and changed anything until you've taken an action. And if we delay the action to later, we can have all the evaluation, all the intention, and a great game plan. No action, no momentum, no progress. So what's the one step, the one action that you're going to take immediately towards increasing your focus, and, and increasing your desperation level. What is the immediate action? Once you have those four things, we now have a recipe to change. And so today's message to you was to wake you up as a friend, as your brother, is to say, listen, if we're gonna get this done, if you're gonna make things great happen, you gotta get very clear on what you want, very clear. But we have got to get starving, we've got to get desperate, we've got to get hungry to perform at the elite level. And for some of you who are already performing pretty high, the reason these next goals are coming more and more slowly, the reason that progress is slower the higher you climb is because you're less hungry, you're less desperate, and you've got more distractions. Some of you that are starting out in the very beginning of your journey towards chasing goals, I'm giving you the recipe. You must increase the hunger level, the desperation level, and you must get more focused. But for some of you who have already achieved that are listening to this, I'm telling you, I understand it, I relate to it. You're like that champion who's trying to repeat. And although you're not satisfied with where you are and you have big goals and ambitions, you must get honest. Am I as starving and as desperate as I was in the very beginning of my career, in the very beginning of my business, in the very beginning of my journey in my faith, the very beginning in the journey of my fitness, whatever it is? Because I can promise you, if we drew a line back to where you made the most progress, you were the most desperate. And the goals start coming slower, don't they? as we become less and less desperate. You've gotta feed that. 
And then the other thing is, there was a time in your life if you were achieving at a high level, whether it was getting your master's degree or graduating college or passing an exam for your business or getting to your first big promotion, I can promise you if I went back and looked at you, you were laser focused and all the distractions went away. This is the same formula and the same recipe. Success leaves clues. I have a great audio you should listen to called Unlocking Your Success Code. It's one of the original ones I've done. If you're on YouTube watching this, go over to my audio platforms on iTunes or Spotify and search for Unlocking Your Success Code. I talk about how the fact that you have a code to your success, if you can repeat that code and apply it to all your goals and dreams, you'll produce the same results in different areas. And so today, I wanna challenge you to get very clear on what your recipe is. If you've already been achieving in your life, evaluate these two areas. Hope today helped you, and again, I wanna remind you, every Monday I release my own specific content, and on Thursdays typically I release interviews. I wanna challenge you to share the show. The reason it's growing like it is is because I release very detailed and specific content that's modern and applies in today's world. It's cutting edge content that'll help you both be inspired and take the right actions. I just ask that you share it with people, it's free. Most of the stuff that I cover, as you know, you've probably paid thousands of dollars for, let's be honest, to go to someone's seminar or multi-day event, and you'll get more in 25 minutes on these audios and videos than you'd get paying thousands of dollars at these events, and it's free. I just want it shared and spread around the world. The second thing I wanna remind you of is that every day on social media, on Instagram, I run the max out, a hashtag two minute drill so I can engage closer with you and know more about you so I can create content to help you specifically. And the way that works is, is every day on Instagram when I make a post on my main feed, if you just make a comment on that post within the first two minutes, I pick a winner every single day on Instagram that gets a coaching call with me or one of my guests on my show, Max Out Gear, my book, specific audios, it's pretty cool stuff. We're gonna do one soon, it's a private jet ride with me. So every day on social media, on Instagram, turn your notifications on, follow me there, and make a comment within the first two minutes, become part of the Max Out universe. If you miss the first two minutes, just make a comment every day on my post, five or six days a week, regardless of the time. At the end of the week, we add up the people who just made a comment every day, and we pick a winner from there as well. So you win by commenting within the first two minutes, and you also win by just making a comment at any point of the day. I read all the comments, I can't reply to all of them, but I read them every day, and there's a couple thousand of them every day now, but I read them because it gives me insights into you and I wanna know how to help you more. So participate in the Max Out Two Minute Drill. Thank you for being here with me today and continue to max out your life. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like more, click the videos right here. They're exactly what you need to see next. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and become a part of the Max Out community. And tell me what you think about the videos in the comments below. I read all of them every week and I select winners that get all kinds of prizes, gear, coaching calls with me. Make a comment.